We weren't happy as we were married. So we decided to get a divorce and invite all of our friends in. But at that, 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 that extended family. <laughs> what you said wasn't an idea. You just, what is that? <laughs> I would pass it if it had that theme song. But at that, that, that. Listen, NBC, hear me out. Welcome back, everyone, to S1E1, the show where each week we pick a different sitcom, watch just the first televised episode, and forgetting anything we might know about the future run of that show, rate it and decide if it's a show we want to greenlight or cancel. This week we're going to be talking about Extended Family. Extended Family has gone 13 episodes with one season so far on NBC. They were talking about episode one, which is called Pilot, originally airing December 23rd, 2023. So to get things started, I'm Jay Gags. With me, as always, the boys, most of the boys, Gordo, Ferg, and Nick. What's going on, guys? Hey, Hello. Yo. I don't have a quote. I don't. Yeah, I was just thinking about that. I wanted to get one, and then I forgot to get <laughs> yeah, one. Yeah, I forgot. And just uh, sorry Joe couldn't be here. Uh, right before we recorded, he accidentally spilled something on his suit. He has, um, he's actually getting his first Holy Communion finally uh, this weekend, and he got something spilt on it, so an emergency dry cleaning situation. Uh, so sorry about that. Uh, hopefully he'll be back next week. He apologizes. I'm just glad he's finally found God. Took him a while, but he got there. So extended family. You know, to to be completely honest with all of you, um, originally this week the the show we had slotted was something Joe picked, and because he can't be here, we did like a little last minute sub, and um, we hadn't really done a lot of newer shows like currently running shows in a while, so. Seemed like a good opportunity what, to slide can you this go, one Sorry, in. can you go through their, like, what's the stats on this episodes-wise? Are they still running? So, I said 13 episodes of one season, but technically, as of the moment we're recording, the 12th episode is airing today, and then the 13th and final of the season will be next week. Okay. So, by the time so. this comes out, it'll be, like, the full season will be out. So, it is an ongoing show as of right now. It's a weekly episodic show on NBC. Have they confirmed if it's been greenlit for a second season yet? You know, I don't know. Usually they kind of wait till after the season's over unless it's a big hit. Well, maybe they're waiting on our green light or cancel. Well, if they were to go by the ratings that I'm seeing so far, IMDb has this clocked in at a 4.8. Rotten Tomatoes critic score 33%. Fan score 19%. I can't say I disagree. I don't want yeah, to tip my too. hat. Same. Listen, we, we're beyond that point. We don't, we, we don't, we tip our hats now. We've been better about not tipping our hats. I don't think we should hide it because I think, honestly, it's one of those, like, I think in the early days, we used to not want people to know how we're voting till we voted. And then I kind of realized that by doing that, we're muting how we feel throughout the whole time we discuss the show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, it, so it, fine. I'll get out and I'll say it. Why did you wake me up to watch this fucking show? <laughs> I'll say this. I would have rather watched a Joe show. That's how much I hated this show. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it. The show made me, I, I like Donald, F F how do you say his last name, by the way? Faison? Faison? Is it Faison? I think you may, I think his name is pronounced Turk. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Chris Turk. I like, I like John Cryer. Uh, but wow, oh my god, this such a low effort show. It's so poorly written. Yeah, it's, it's not even they're all giving it their all. And so it's, I don't blame any of the actors. This is poor writing. This is the poor writing for new shows that I always talk shit yeah, about. It, to you guys. It, we're going back to that, like that the there's a formula, right? That it doesn't matter what you do, people are gonna watch it, we're gonna put it out, you know, like and they're following that formula. Like they don't care about the content they just are making yeah, but this isn't a netflix show so it's like you can't go by that this is on television well maybe the netflix formula is leaking out into the networks like all gooey and shit what about um is this like a strike show no this would have been done no i don't think there's any good reason the show is as bad as it is so i'm so i'm not i don't hate the show as much as you guys all hate it however like when i look at these scores like i don't think it's a 19 percent show so we've covered way worse shows that are much higher rated when you look at them. But this is like another victim of, uh, I think writing does come into it. 
also like it just this is a show that i think has um like enough bones to it like you you can it could form into something good if if you make some alterations along the way i agree with that because i don't i don't necessarily hate the concept like what they're doing is interesting I don't think it's very new, but I don't like the the weird talking. That's just a weird decision. It doesn't know what it wants to be. Like it's yeah. trying to be like Modern Family with the the talking whole, heads, yeah. like the talking heads. But it's like the rest of the show is not like that. Where most of Modern Family was like that. Yeah, because this is shot like a, this is a three camera sitcom, yeah. and then Modern Family is a single camera. So it's yeah, it, it it's weird. This is kind of like a perfect example of what we were talking about last week with Undeclared. Was that last week? Yes. Yeah. So we had talked about, like, does it feel like a sitcom or not? And we decided that there was issues with how it felt because of the single versus multicam. And that you could have done this show in a multicam format. It just wouldn't have felt right. And I feel like that's what this show is. They did it multicam. Or they did it. Yeah, they did it multicam. But maybe would have done better single cam. You know, same style and everything. But, I yeah, I don't know. This just... Do you think the like the studio audience sitcom multi camera thing is dying because they, no. there hasn't been a good one in a long time? I think a lot of things go into it now, and we've seen this with a lot of shows we've covered, even shows we really liked from back in the day. Shows, especially sitcoms, sometimes need time to figure themselves out, and there's not enough patience from the network these days to ride things out anymore. Yeah, I so didn't like they. We'll get into it when we do the episode, but they couldn't figure out if they wanted the divorced couple to love each other after the divorce or hate each other. Yep. And like it kept switching back and forth like, oh, we're divorced. Oh, we're a team. And- I feel like with Jim's character, especially, they didn't know if you were supposed to like him or really hate him. It, like, yeah, his his whole like stance on things shifted a lot where you, you didn't know if you were supposed to be behind this guy or not. Right. I like Bobby, though. The father? Yeah. Yeah, he was good. Well, and I assume also just for the to clarify, none of you watched this before today. No. And those ratings you were talking about were that that for the episode or for the series and as, as series a whole? in general. Okay. No, the only thing that I've seen on this show is like Facebook and Same. Instagram pumping me with the ads for it. I never saw anything for this. Yeah, I got a lot of reels for this show. Yeah, me too. I think what happens, too, though, is to go back to what we were saying a minute ago, a lot of the shows back in the day also, it was there was a lot of feedback that would go throughout a season because things were being filmed as the seasons go on. And now I don't know how this was filmed, but I don't think this was, I think this is more the, the, the streaming style now where they bang out a season and then they already have a whole season's worth of shit. Oh, so it's not going to get better then. Yeah, so you don't have, like, the benefit of, like, what do people like, what do they not like, how do we adjust this to better suit, you know, like, moving forward, because they've already made a whole season. So, uh, you know, it's too late by the time it comes out. It is what it is. Yeah, that's a problem. But, I mean, I, I see that it's probably a cost, you know, cost benefit, you know, for the studio to bang it out all in one pop. I see. I disagree. For a streaming series, I get it because that's all going up at once. But something that's being aired weekly, where you like, I don't get the benefit. Where now this show is getting poor ratings, no one's watching. It's probably just how these production companies are probably formatted to just do these shows now. That all the studios probably just do it this way because that's probably just the new norm. That's exactly it. I think. Yeah. Also, too, like takes time to edit it. Yeah, but that was always that was always part of the system. I just think. I just think now, because the majority of new content goes on to streamers and they film the season at once, I think that's just how the system has evolved. So that's just how they're going to do things, whether or not it's weekly episodic or not. I would just rather they get their act together, hash it out, and maybe the other seasons do it that way. Season one, you're working yourself off, find your identity. I can see this, and I don't know, did you guys look it up? I don't know if they've officially said one way or another if the show is going to be brought back for season two or not. The most recent thing I saw was from it's the NBC website, and the article is from oh, it was from February twenty sixth, and it still had not been green light for a second season. They're probably gonna wait for it to end. Um, I wouldn't be shocked either way, but they've even though it's not rated well, I feel like they've put so much into it that they they might ride it out just because they have all the 
all the right pieces so maybe they try to keep going but we'll let's talk about the episode and kind of take it from there so just to start off we meet jim and jim's played by john crier most recently known because of two and a half men but i mean he has like a super long list of known roles yeah especially like he had his big run like in the 80s and stuff and pretty in pink and stuff like that so he was also uh in with charlie sheen he was in um hot shots oh all right yeah so yeah <laughs> so yeah so he's um on the phone he walks into the apartment and he's talking to julia who we know we don't know at the time but we will find out very soon is his ex-wife and basically he's just telling her how he's heading in the house he's going to record uh the next like goldfish video their daughter's at camp and he's been like you know sending her videos about the goldfish you know to you know forever whatever it is like she just wants updates on her pet this is already dumb this is already so stupid why would you pick a goldfish for this like give them something that you could actually believe that this 13 year old girl gives a fuck about well hold on i i I don't want to i don't want to spoil it just yet let's let me i don't want to get into it I want to answer your you know your, your and, thing, okay. but in two did you not know exactly what was going to happen yes. when they brought this up? All like, right, so all right, so just yeah. Then to get into it right away, after he's off the phone, he goes in and he goes to film this little fish vlog, and he's you know set you know this is all like a selfie video for his daughter, and talking about the fish, and he has all these little props around it, and oh you know he's been up late and doing this and that, so he's sleeping and all the, it, and it come to find out he realizes after he ends the video this fish is dead. So, Nick, to, to get into what you just said, if you use anything but a fish, like, unless it's, like, maybe something small. That's what I mean. It doesn't need to be a dead dog. That's not what I'm saying. You can't have the dogs dead. Yeah, like, that's too, yeah. that's way too much. <laughs> yeah, but you, you do a fish because it's the most likely to die on a kid. Every parent goes through that with their kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you could do, like, a turtle or something, but it's just, yeah, the fish makes the most sense. But it wasn't just, like, like a, uh, something that happened, like... The entire episode hinged on this dead fish, and that went with a hamster. Exactly, something else that they like. But but I'll say this uh, to to give the show any credit, and not to jump super ahead. But later in the episode, you know, when things start to resolve themselves, it's not lost in the writing that a fish is insignificant. So it is that is true. Yeah, but I I don't know. I just. I just feel like the the dead fi- oh your fucking pet di- I accidentally killed your pet while you were away is so overused, and there was another there was probably a dozen other ways they could have gone about conveying the story that they're trying to do, but they they cheaped out and did the most basic bullshit they could think of, and I it bugs the shit out of me. To me personally, and, and I don't want to sound like I keep defending the show, especially on a pilot too. By the way, like get creative on the pilot. But and sitcoms do inherently it. aren't super creative, I think, at times. It's just a matter of your writing. I just think, like, it's a lot of recycled premises, but it's all about the writing. And and I think, you know, to what Ferg said earlier, the writing just kind of wasn't there. Yeah. But it kind of was, though, because it the, the insignificance of the fish, like we said. But, you know, we'll get to that when we get it to it. It has its but... moments. I mean, I don't think it was written by 10-year-olds. But, yeah, they're, they're, there's a lot of just stuff that doesn't click. I will say when he gets off the phone and he realizes the fish is dead and he, and he pulls it out and he's trying to give it like mouth to mouth and that was kind of funny. accidentally swallows yeah. it and coughs it like across the room and it hits like <laughs> the dishwasher. Like that was funny. Like, I mean, John Cryer is funny. Like that's a, like what also yeah. bums me out is that they wasted. So I think every individual actor in this is good. And I think their characters are good. It's the way they interact and talk to each other. All of a sudden the dialogue becomes ass. I think all his scenes by himself, he's great. I think, like, the wife and him together, I just, this doesn't work. It almost me. felt to me at a time where, like, he was being directed a certain way, and then he kept feeling like the character should be different and kept injecting how he felt the character should be, so it was, like, inconsistently played throughout the episode. And I also didn't, like, I couldn't understand. They, they jam, like, the, we're happy to be divorced down your throats. But then they're also hinting that he's not super happy with it. Like, just by the way, like, with the whole tracking thing and the... Yeah, but that stuff will... I it, That can... How do I phrase this? I don't think it should be super cut and dry. So I think the fact that there's some doubt about, like, what the reality of the situation is is okay. 
but yeah, I do think they were a little bit flippy within the episode. It wasn't like creatively woven in that there was conflict. And I feel like I would agree. I think if there wasn't, if Donald Faison's character wasn't a staple starting right away, right? Mm. Because I, I feel like you can't, you can't root for a will they, won't they between the husband and wife who've been divorced, knowing that the main, the other main character on the show isn't going any. You know what I mean? Like, it's well, just yeah, kinda... but I think I think you're, you, the will they, won't they? I feel like is more centered towards like slightly younger shows, right? Because a lot, like, we got to think more like the standard family, like the but the family sitcom, like the standard family sitcom that's usually made for the slightly older audience. Those typically the families are established and there's not, or whatever the dynamic of the family is established. And there's not like a lot of that going on the will they, won't they? I, th- I think what it is with him and the wife, I think they are genuinely happy to be apart and they're getting along. But think of any breakup. You're fine until the person you broke up with finds someone else. And that's what it is, is he's upset that she moved on. Do you know who she is, Ferg? Did she, did it? She looks familiar, but it didn't click. She's Lou from Suits. Oh. Oh, Louis Suits. Louis Suits, yeah. <laughs> I think Lou's her name anyways. I could be wrong, but you know who I'm talking about. Yeah, the other lawyer chick. Yeah. After he cops up that goldfish is when we get into the actual intro of the show. I personally, I, so the visual, I guess, was fine. It's just a lot of flashing pictures that tells you everything you need to know about the show. So without any explanation after the first scene, because in the first scene, there's no reason to not think that, that Jim and Julia are still together, right? But here we see Jim and Julia were together. They are no longer together. And now she's with Trey. And that's all shown in the intro terrible music being played yeah. over it that like didn't yeah. really fit like any type of i don't know it just didn't work with the the standard kind of like upbeat sitcom type of sound nbc is better than this like i don't like they first five they? seconds of this yeah i mean they they're they're like the spearhead for sitcoms aren't they like all some of the best sitcoms were nbc they should be better at this but like the more modern ones have been ass. I think yeah, I think yep. you're right. I think in in recent years they're trending more towards Netflix sitcom style. But well, I think what happens in in a lot of these cases too is you're the network, you're sold on a premise. We've already established the premise isn't bad. It's a good premise. The cast is good. Yeah, yeah. You have established actors, so everything looks good on paper to say, all right, let's go forward. So you know things work out, and you don't really truly see a show until it happens. So, you know, it gets green light, the, green light, they make the pilot. I mean, we'll continue to discuss the pilot and how we feel did about we it. Did we mention that Mike O'Malley did, does this show? No, like I was going to mention it here because we find that out in this intro. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, a Mike O'Malley creation, Boston local. That's the other thing that we pull from the intro. We know that it's a Boston-based show. Now, also, too, at the end, it said Warner Productions. Is that Tom Warner? Like, because it's spelt like his name, and it has the Red Sox font. Uh, you know, that's a good question. I didn't think about that. Is it Warner Film Production or Film and Television Production Company? Why didn't you just look it up when you wondered that thing? (laughs) Because it spurs debate, Jay. No, it spurred you asking us a question, and all of us going, I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I don't think it is. Just because any website that talks about it is an Australian-based website, so it's Werner Entertainment, and it is Tom Werner. It is Tom Werner, but what's the website that you're seeing? I was on uh, Gordo's favorite Wikipedia, and then when you go to the right and you look at the production companies, Werner Entertainment's the first thing, and you click on Werner Entertainment, it takes you straight to Tom Werner's uh, wiki page. See, uh, going back to our roots, comedy. And Wikipedia facts. Wait a minute. Jeez. I didn't know that he's like also produced the Cosby show, Roseanne, Third Rock from the Sun, that 70s yeah. show. That's yeah. where he made his money, I thought. I didn't realize. Well, now that makes more sense. Well, like he could produce a team. <laughs> <laughs> For real, this dude's screwing the pooch with the Red Sox right now. Yeah, I mean, the intro itself, like I said, it, I didn't love it. it the, visually, it was fine. I thought maybe a better song would have helped. It it tells you an awful lot. It's it's giving you the whole origin. I, and to watch the first episode, I 
kind of feel like it spoils too much. Yeah, I feel like the first episode should have been the intro, if that makes sense, like an extended intro. We've said this before. This shows where the first episode, they hide things in, in the intro and they recut them because they don't want to tell yeah. you too much. And this, I think this show would have benefited from it. So yeah, after the intro, we get to this confessional style scene, like we are talking about before with the talking heads. And uh, we're in the living room, the couch is set up, and we see Jim and Julia, who we come to find out were once married, are no longer married. Uh, they were married for 17 years. And while they're explaining the story of their divorce and how on the same page they are, they're very in sync with one another. It's a lot of finishing each other's sentences. There's a really good tone, like... You are made to believe, especially from this scene, from what we're seeing now, that it truly was a mutual agreement to divorce. <sighs> Did they go overboard with that feeling, though? Because I feel like they were, like, to the point where it almost felt disingenuine, that they were so genuine about it. I thought it was a fresh perspective. Like, uh, I'm okay with seeing, I'm okay with seeing divorce from a different perspective than... Just we hate course, each other yeah, and, but... and it's going to be toxic the whole time. Like, I'm okay with that. I thought it was weird that they had them married for 17 years before the divorce. And they have young kids. I know, but I mean. Not super young, though. I mean, like, the oldest daughter's 13. So you figure they were married for, like, a few years before she got pregnant. It's not that crazy. But the other, the son is young. Well, that happens. Yeah, I know. I just didn't like this, like, talking head scene. Like, is it? I, I don't know. It was weird. I wish this didn't have them, like, period. Yeah. I just, I, it is, it's just, to me, it was interesting, like we said before, to go with a three-camera style sitcom and use a device that's primarily only used for single camera was very interesting in the way that it was used. The one thing I do like about it is, I mean, I don't think it fits in with the show, but I like it whenever they introduce a new character, it zooms out a little more and there's more on the talking head. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like throughout the episode when they keep using it, whenever there is people on the couch having interviews, it seems like Jim has to be present. Or you know what I mean? So it's always extended through Jim and Julia sitting there. It's never just Trey by himself on the couch. But yeah, it was almost um it was a little weird how they were this in sync with one another, but again, I don't know. It it I'm kind of okay with it just cuz it is different. And like it's enough to make you go, okay, where's this going? This is this is something I'm not used to seeing. Yeah, I was I was okay with it, and then they went into the divorce ceremony, and that's when they lost me. I was like, Oof. this is stupid. Yeah, that was rough. And who would attend this? <laughs> right? <laughs> you don't go to that. You think they ask for gifts? The show also jumps around a little bit too, because you have him killing the fish, then you cut to this, and then the next scene we're cutting back to Jim. Right, but seemingly right after he killed the fish because he calls his dad over and Julie is not there yet. So like the way they paced the show, I thought was really weird at times. So this is another thing. Whose house is this? Seems like his and the kids. Eh, not really though. I will say, I will say this. I had watched a couple episodes of this when it first came out. So I know the answer to it, but it is not explained in the show. There is a point where he mentions in this episode his apartment. He needs something for his apartment. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's They did true. not convey that fact then. Oh, I remember it showed the that in the um in the Facebook reels. Okay, okay, I know what the answer is. I know what the answer is. And I would never guess it from this episode. Oh, and the the dad is played by com Boston comedian Lenny Clark. Lenny Clark, yeah. Yeah. He walks in and Jim's trying to explain to his dad how, you know, the fish died on his watch. And he's basically telling him, all right, so just lie about it. Like, and that's what Jim's plan was to do. Good advice. And he's just like, he's like, kids are stupid. Jim's worried that his daughter's too smart is going to pick up on this, though. And he tells the story. He's like, no, he's like, when, uh, you know, when I, I lied to you and Rusty the cat died. And then I didn't love how this scene played out because it was very obvious so now we find out all right lie to your kids i lied to you when you were a kid like rusty the cat and he goes well rusty the cat died saving a family from a house fire and he's like you want the truth you know and then he was like <laughs> was it street sweeper <laughs> you 50 you thought he was still <laughs> the cat saved oh my god so i'll say 
I will, I, if I was uh, to defend Jim, I, I can see a situation where you don't think about it, it again. So it's like what you believe to be true just was true, right? So you never analyze it again. So now that he's saying it out loud years later, obviously you think about it. Oh, wait, obviously that was a lie. My thing was his dad tells him that it was a lie, tells him how he died. His reaction was like real flat. And I thought John Cryer is too good of an actor for how he got through the scene. I feel like he didn't really react to the news. I, f- I feel like he was struggling to work with Lenny Clark. Like Lenny Clark. I mean, I like Lenny. He, he's, uh, he's a native, but like um, he didn't seem comfortable yet in this. And maybe that. I was... didn't really get that vibe. I thought. I thought he really? I did. He's funny. All he does is he shows up and screams lines. <laughs> You're gonna lie. <laughs> uh, but actually, now that now that we're talking about it, I'm reminded of something that I kind of have to walk back now. When I was younger, I had a black bunny named Thumper, and um, at one point, it was too tough to manage. So my uncle down the Cape took him, and uh, my mom didn't tell me that that was the case. And I was like 28 years old when I realized that that's not what happened. <laughs> And that the bunny definitely just died. I had to like call my mom and like be like, Thumper died, didn't he? And she was like, Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I thought this bunny was like cool for years. Like I just realized right now that that bunny died and you didn't die. <laughs> but it fucking worked because I, you know, I bought it and moved on. You don't want to expose kids to death that early, but his daughter's a little old that you don't have to lie about a fucking fish. And she's another one of those way wiser than her years kids, which drives me fucking nuts. Well, we're, ju- we're jumping ahead a lot, but I do want to get into all that stuff. But yes, uh, I, and I have some notes about the daughter when she starts talking later, when we meet her character later on. But this scene, it just, it would have benefited to be cut short a little bit. It was a really short scene, I thought. <laughs> Talked to him for like a minute. The story of, of just the cat. And then the grinder, and then me pulling them, and then it could have just been. I it could have just been. Hey, remember Rusty the cat? Yeah, I backed over him with my truck. <laughs> yeah, end it. I guess like if you wanted, if you wanted to cut it short, he could have said, "Hey, do you remember Rusty the cat?" And he could be like, "Yeah, he rescued that family from the fire." And then the dad could have just gave him like a look and just walked off. Exactly, and then they could have got into the next part of it. But yeah, I thought the way that. Jim's character was reacting to the news, even though it's much later and he's an adult. It was like super flat. So that was kind of my issue with it. He just didn't behave the way I would expect a person to behave under those circumstances. Also, he's pretty sneaky. I feel like he would have figured out to replace the fish right away. He wouldn't even told the wife because it makes him look bad. Yeah, right. But I think that we're we are trying to establish that these two parent the same way. Like I think that drives in the point that they're divorced, but it's truly because they just didn't want to be romantic with one another anymore. Because when it comes down to stupid shit like this, they're not way on different pages. They're, they're the two that are like teamed up because they, yeah. they have a similar thought train on how to handle the situation. So now he's telling his dad like that he has to go find Julia. And he's like, yeah, Julia's a great liar. She spent 17 years pretending she liked me. I would have went with pretending she loves you. And, yeah, right. Oh, my. But I think, but they, they do call back to that later. You can tell that uh, she's not his biggest fan for whatever reason. <laughs> it's those fluffanutters. I've wanted a fluffanutter more in my life after watching too. this. Me too. Me too. I got some fluff in my fridge. Maybe I should, but all I have is sourdough bread, and that's just like a weird combo. You don't want to put fluffanutter on a sourdough bread. Why not? Sure, it would actually be fine. I don't know. It's a little... The sweet and the sour, baby. Maybe I'll do it, and I'll get back to you guys. Go do it right now. We get back to the confessional, and uh, it's one of those, you know, before we go any further, we want to make sure you guys get how happy we are. And they're talking about, like, the, the connotation that goes with divorce, and they didn't want that. So when they got divorced, they wanted everyone around them to know that this was a very different situation. So they celebrated by having a reverse wedding ceremony. And then we cut to that actual ceremony. And this was the shit that I, re- I did not personally like this scene at all. This was when I realized I was canceling it this early. Oh, Same. whoops. Yep. Yep. <laughs> this seemed very, um, for episode one, very jump the sharky already. It was just so, how to describe it? So let me explain the scene first. 
we're seeing now their reverse wedding ceremony. They're in a church, yeah, and they're reliving their wedding in reverse. You put her wedding dress on. He's in a tux. He puts a wig on. John Cryer is bald in the show, by the way. He hasn't been bald in the last few projects you've seen him in. So he's got a wig on to look how he did when he got married. And they're doing everything in reverse. So they're ripping up their wedding vows. Uh, they're, it's just, it's, they're, she walks down the aisle backwards at the end. It's all these things. They're just doing it all. Yeah, they take off their rings and give them back to each other. Yeah, I think the, the dad's like, I'm going to go pawn these. <laughs> I did laugh at that. I laughed at that. But I just thought, like, this whole ceremony, first off, a church would never allow this. <laughs> like, if no. we're being honest. No. I, I just felt like this is not realistic. And there's so many sitcoms where wild shit can happen, and that's fine. But this show is based in reality. So you yeah. can't get away with something this fucking wacky in a sitcom that's supposed to feel a little bit more realistic. This would just never happen. And I like the idea of this whole reverse wedding ceremony. But instead of doing the the whole wedding thing, the whole... Like, it should have been something in the house with a few friends. I don't know. Like, she could have worn the dress, but the way they reenacted a whole wedding was too much. They had a whole church full of guests, and then they had a reception full of guests. Yeah. <laughs> it's not realistic yeah. to do that. No. It, do- it doesn't matter what they say that's awkward. Like, yeah. it's just awkward. Yeah. Like, nobody I know would be like, oh, let's go to my friend's divorce proceedings. Like. Those are held in court. Like, fine, if you maybe wanted to have, like, a justice of the peace or something in the courthouse, be like, yeah, you're divorced. Like, So, I, I, again, I get that this is, they're, they're trying to be creative here. They're trying to do something fun for the show. It just, I think if you scaled it back and you made the reverse wedding, like, you can get away with a reverse wedding. You couldn't go full reverse wedding this way. Like, it needed to be a much more scaled down thing for it to be enough for you to bite on and go okay this is this is believable enough you know what bugged me too and this is kind of a shallow thing honestly now that i think about it she seems too out of his league for him to not be upset about getting a divorce does that make sense to anybody yeah, she's meant for yeah. harvey specter <laughs> exactly right but like um and i think maybe part of this is how he's portrayed on two and a half men which is what everybody's gonna know him from primarily he's just like this shit on like kind like loser like it's not even like how he's portrayed like he is a loser on that show especially the late seasons yeah but yo they flanderize him pretty bad well you can't hold his his past work against him though I, but what i'm saying is his character isn't different enough for him to not be upset about this divorce it just doesn't feel right like like we've said a few times now like i feel like it could have just been done a better way i think that it also this is not episode one material this is material that you do when you know the characters more this could work in like episode seven no i don't want this in any part of the show i hate that it (laughs) happened but if you're gonna do it make it part of the intro like show it in pictures don't even explain it just show it in a couple pictures and then there's your explanation if that's in the intro, though, it's tough to explain without a voiceover also in the intro because it kind of just looks like a wedding. Otherwise, you just talk it? about it like a little bit like in de- sporadic episodes in the future and uh, you let the audience learn. We weren't happy as we were married, so we decided to get a divorce and invite all of our friends in. That 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 extended family. <laughs> what you said wasn't in an idea. You just what is that? <laughs> I would pass it. <laughs> that theme song. Listen, NBC, hear me out. Hear me out. Just just redo it. If I was to if I was to rewrite it in only in a more clever way. <laughs> how I would probably have started it is if they really want to do the reverse wedding, I, I instead of all this goldfish stuff right up front, the very first scene could have been the wedding. The pre-intro scene could have been the reverse wedding, which leads you to believe that you're at a wedding. And then during whatever, during the readings or whatever, it reveals itself the other yeah. way. See, much better and idea. Then, and then instead of having it be like a montage, have some dialogue attached to it. And then that can be See, the that swerve. wasn't hard. Yeah, that's the swerve, and it takes you into the intro. Da 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 da. Extended family. 
Also, I meant to bring this up at the top of the show. The name of the show doesn't convey anything about the show at all. Oh, what is but extended it does. family? But it does because the X is in a different color. Yes. Okay, I did not realize that. That makes more sense, yes. Super. Yeah. 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 I mean, otherwise, the only extended family is Trey. <laughs> like, right. I was like, what yeah. the fuck's the point of the name of this? But okay, the X thing. That does make oh, sense. Oh, right? extended family. Yes. Yeah. da 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 Extended family. <laughs> See, that's how bad this show is. I didn't even pick up on that. It's too now. smart for you. That's the problem. It's too clever. You idiot. Give me a show about cavemen living in modern <laughs> times. Please. <laughs> that actually got a green light. I don't think this is going to get a green light. Anyways, the next scene, you see Julia. I don't know where she is. Because it sounds later on like she's going to work because she's talking about a meeting later on. But when she sees Jim, Jim runs up to her and she's asking if he's there for brunch. So I, I really don't know where they're supposed to be <laughs> during the scene. Does anybody else... It's probably not a thought that needed to be on the podcast, but does anybody else, when they hear Julia, automatically think Gulia? Yes. Because I've never heard the name Julia and not immediately thought Julia Gulia. In this case, I did not. Although it is one of my favorite movies that some of my best friend's son didn't invite me to. I don't <laughs> want to talk about the movie without Joe. We had a very special moment <laughs> seeing that together. <laughs> oh, man. They say those two boys became adults that day. <laughs> <laughs> no i think she's just the, it's just like a country club sl or slash restaurant yeah it, was, it wasn't made very clear but what happens is she's there and jim runs up to her and she's like how did you find me and he's like oh family tracking on the phone this is some some of the some of the stuff i can give it credit for is they're still navigating their way through we're not together anymore so they're still like on the same family tracking app how long have they been separated now been a while because she's already met somebody else and is getting married <laughs> i mean that could have been three days after the divorce like, yeah you don't know. like i get the feeling that like the timeline's a little sketchy because it's tough to tell how long they've been apart because i don't think it's super super long i feel like it's a year i don't think so because the dialogue uh i don't think the show thought out some of the details well enough so it's tough to pinpoint it <laughs> <laughs> I can see why you say it's a short time because the daughter's not over it. She's having a hard time. The goldfish thing, we kind of find out later on a little bit more about the goldfish and how it came into existence. So that makes me feel like they haven't had it too long. Uh, they haven't been a apart for too long. Didn't they say the goldfish was like six months old or something? No, when it died, they said, aren't they only supposed to last like six months? Oh, so, okay. So it kind of gave me the impression that it wasn't, uh, you know, uh, much older than that, if anything. I remember I had a goldfish once, and I just, I didn't want it anymore, and it wouldn't die. I had it for, like, <laughs> years and years and years. I didn't want to take, this was when my, when my room was still upstairs, so to clean the tank, I had to carry the giant fucking tank down and everything. <laughs> it was just miserable. I was like, will you fucking die, you stupid <laughs> fish? <laughs> first time with any type of responsibility and he did not like it uh i didn't even buy the fish i won it in a raffle at school when we were in, oh wow i think miss spinney's class to get back into some of this phone tracking stuff do you guys use things like that i mean ferg do you use anything like that for your kid or anything yeah i know what he is i have a tracking thing on his phone uh i would never do that with anybody else though. <laughs> i do it with a few friends i don't like having my exact stuff Tell me why, though. Why does that? Why would you not want that? What if are you I doing? A if, I, if I commit a crime, they'll be able to prove that I did it. Not just that, <laughs> but like, I think everyone's de deserving of some degree of privacy. I don't need you to know the exact location I'm at at every time. Like, all you have to do is open an app and you know where I am. Like, I acknowledge modern day. We live in a world where we're tracked at all times. We have our phones. We give out signals. We're, we're, we're posting wherever we are. But I think the idea of someone being able to watch my every step and, like, know where I am, like, I think that's a little too much. And I think everyone deserves at least the 1% of privacy we still have, you know? So I have it on my dog, and it bums me out because I have, like, an air tag on my dog. And whenever I leave her behind someplace, it will pop up and it will say, Martha Doodle left behind. And then I get <laughs> sad. How do, Can you explain to me how air tags work? Because they only work on Wi-Fi, right? No, they work on Bluetooth. 
And from what I understand, I mean, that's what I meant was Bluetooth. Yeah. So like, if they're out of Bluetooth range, which which isn't very far, how does it work? It's not because it goes by other people's Bluetooth signals if it's around. So if you're trying to ping it, I don't like that either. It and somebody else's Bluetooth is on, right? Like, say I'm in the middle. Keep of Keep the... your dog off my Bluetooth, Gordo. So it uses as like a Bluetooth repeater. It uses Correct. everybody else. That's wild. Yeah, and then yeah, yeah, and then Android can now do it. I ju- I meant to ask Jay that. I noticed things pop up on my Android phone that like, oh, a, an air tag is near you. I've never and gotten it was that. Freaking me the fuck out, and it must have been one of the people who live below me. Because I'm like, is somebody following me? I'm like, checking my car and shit. Like, I was, was going to say, yeah. check your whale run. Yeah. Well, Because what was happening was that sick people who had Apple. Yeah, like Apple would be notified about the AirTag, but anybody who had Android couldn't tell if there was Correct. an AirTag near them. So they had to like implement it. Yeah. So now they turned that on so that Androids can do that because people were like stalking people and doing other nefarious shit with it. But yeah, I mean, I can, I would, I can, I'd do it now with friends, but I would do it with, you know, my children for sure. Like, I, there's no reason not to, up to a certain age, you know. It says here on Apple, it says, your AirTag sends out secure Bluetooth signals that can be detected by nearby devices in the Find My Network. So yeah. So if, the, if, if Mart, if the dog was in a remote area, it's essentially useless, right? From my understanding. Yeah. Anyways, to get back on all this stuff, Julia, for obvious reasons, doesn't like that her ex-husband is tracking her every movement. So now he's trying to help her navigate how to turn this thing off. He's like, uh, trying to remember, he said something to her along the lines, how, like, just like with how we had to opt out of our wedding, uh, out of our marriage, you have to opt out of this app and he, it doesn't just go away automatically. So now she's trying to get into the app and turn it off and she's having a hard time doing it. I and mean, this is kind of the only the first time you saw not that you saw a lot of the two of them before, but the first conflict between the two to maybe show you that it's not as peachy as you saw in the initial yeah. interview with the two. Now, did he have to go like air tracker and go? Couldn't he have just called her? Probably. I mean, yeah. it, it, this is a device just to set yeah, up the just scene. to set up this joke because they get along enough that he could say, "Hey, I need to talk to you." But the whole thing too was, "Hey, like, so why did you need to talk to me, anyways?" Like, what was so important? Like, was someone kidnapped? No. Does someone need rescuing? No. Because these were all the things he was saying before, the, the benefits of having the tracking. That's how I would have done it. I would have showed her at lunch with, um, what's his name? Trey? With Trey. Her phone rings. She ignores it three times. The next time she looks at it, ignores it, and then the camera pans up and he's behind her. Why are you ignoring me? <laughs> like, I need to talk to you. And then you can do the whole tracking uh, joke and whatnot. You even have to explain who Trey is. S1E1 is but... better at this than major networks. As she's going through all these potential things, like, was it this, was it that? She says, is someone dead? He goes, she's like, go to your meeting. Because now he doesn't want to explain what he did. And she's like, oh my God, is someone dead? It's like, someone? No. Something? <laughs> like, and then uh, she just assumed that he killed her orchid, but eventually he has to come clean and mention, you know, that he did kill the, the fish. Googles. Why does he have the ability to kill her orchid? Why is he taking care of her o- orchid? Yeah. I'm question. really confused by their living situation. I know we discussed him having his own apartment. So let me let me break format, and I will tell you from I think I only I saw two or three episodes. Can't even remember if I saw a third. So what happens? We don't see this in this episode, but what they do is they share that house and they switch every other week. So instead of the kids moving back and forth, they go back and forth and share the house. So he has an apartment that he lives at, and then she'll stay with Trey. And they'll go back and forth and have the house back and forth, back and forth. See, that's a wacky concept. It is. And I think that that probably is something they should have explained in episode one, because that's interesting enough to maybe be an eyebrow raiser. That would have been better than the reverse wedding. And just show them kind of coming back and forth. Yeah, I would say that maybe there should be more of an emphasis on the the dynamics of living that way would be more of the interesting story to base the show around. You know, like we share this house, but, you know, not really like something like that, I think, could have been 
a more creative way to explain the the abnormalities of the situation they're in. Extended family. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> snap, snap. <laughs> snap, snap. Today. While they're having the conversation, this is when Trey walks in. This is the first time we meet him. I think to go back to what we are saying before, I think when you see, there's a lot of hostility that Jim shows towards Trey. And I think it is, it's not so much that he wants to be back with Julia, but there is a, not that you don't, you can want your ex to be happy, but you never want to feel like she did better. Like, oh, good thing she divorced me and now she's with this better dude. <laughs> so like, there's always going to be a little bit of a competition in your brain, I guess. Yeah. She found someone before him too. It's like, so it's like she won the divorce. Yeah, that's true too. I mean, he is also the owner of the Boston Celtics. That's why I'm wearing a Celtics t-shirt. I wore that specifically because of today's episode. I should have wore mine. Actually, I'll say this. I was going through my uh, my dresser. I don't know what happened. I had a bunch of Celtics jerseys, and a bunch of them are just missed. I don't know what happened. Over the years, <laughs> moving around. But I had some good jerseys, and I don't know where they are right now. Can't help you there, bud. Where is my Rashid Wallace Celtics jersey? Uh, what is your leading theory? Where they went? Yeah. I moved a lot. And I just think that at some point during one of the moves, <laughs> they probably got lost. A swarm of moths ate them. Uh, one of your roommates is a basketball fan. Maybe he's got a different mail. size, a <laughs> different size person. Yeah, true. But yeah, no, Trey makes it very known that he's the owner of the Boston Celtics. He, he introduces himself that way. <laughs> like, uh, not that he's cocky, but also not a normal way to introduce yourself when you're talking to people. No, but I liked how they acknowledged that it wasn't normal to do that. Yeah, because Jim's like, I don't say, hey, I'm Jim Kearney, owner of a 2004 Honda Accord. So are you guys familiar with the Grosbeck tie-in? No. On the show? The actual owner of the Celtics, Wick Grosbeck. Grosbeck? I forget how to pronounce his name. You don't hear his name. Grosbeck. He felt like his life could be the premise for a television sitcom. He knew just where to turn his friend Tom Werner, a Red Sox owner and TV veteran who was behind the mega hits like The Cosby Show, Roseanne, and That 70s Show. The result is Extended Family. This show is about the, the actual owner of the Celtics, They apparently. said Mike O'Malley created the show. Well, yeah, but it's apparently about him. The only connection that they have is that they own the Celtics. Come on. Where are you reading that on? Uh, Fortune.com. Oh. Which premieres on NBC on Saturday night, 8 p.m., starring John Cryer, Donna Faison, Abigail Spencer, in a love triangle inspired by the real-life dynamic that developed between Grosbeck and his new wife and her ex-husband, a lifelong Celtics fan. Um, He looked at her like, there's a million guys in New England you could be dating, said Werner, who advised the three on developing the show and joined them as an executive producer. The ensuing hijinks play off the decision by Amelia Fazolari and George Geyer to follow their divorce with an arranged, an arrangement called nesting. So this is, this is someone's life, which makes it even dumber somehow. (laughs) (laughs) This is... This thing that we thought was terrible writing is based in reality. No, there's still terrible writing. Yeah, it's not the premise that's terrible. It's that's the... true. We did agree that the premise is good. Yeah. I'll also say um, Wick Grosbeck had an interesting casting choice to play him. <laughs> that, that's how he sees himself when he looks yeah. in the mirror. Interesting. But, um, but no, you know, honestly, that is kind of interesting that you now that you look into it, though, because I, I did not know that. There's not a lot when it's funny. You could find that looking him up. But when you look up the show, there's not a lot of information. Yeah, on it. right. You'd think that that would be like at the top of things. And I don't know if this I assume this is not real, but um, they get into how Trey met Julia. And basically, Trey was in a situation where he was leaving a restaurant. He had had some drinks. He got stopped by paparazzi and they were asking him some questions and he made a comment talking about how bad the Celtics have been playing and how like he was tired of them looking like the redheaded stepchild of the NBA. And then like they, they showed the scene where it happens and like, it's like that flashback sequence in front of the restaurant. And there's like a a family of redheads that are looking at him after. And he kind of gets into it. He's like, 
yeah, being in Boston <laughs> and like uh, Celtic coming from, you know, the world like, you know, Celtic, all that stuff. Obviously, there's a lot of redheads, so I've offended a lot of people in this area with that comment. I, I mean, I thought that was all pretty funny. I thought that whole thing was funny as well. I thought that was very well done. And just how, like, Jim constantly brings it up and throws it in his face. I like kind of like their relationship, just the two of them, the two men. <laughs> and basically what happened was Julia was, like, the advisor, like, the crisis, of, like, to get him out of the situation. She was his public relations person. Yeah, so that's how the two of them came to be. They fell in love, stuff like that. But yeah, I think um, the relationship between him and Jim, there has to be that little bit of conflict, which I think is Jim being a little chest out, you know, feeling like he's has to compare himself to his ex's new boyfriend. So I think that does work out. It does, and, and it's wacky that he is the Celtics owner, because it's kind of hard to compare yourself to that. Unless you're Tom Warner. When, um, when they cut back to that, like, confessional thing, and he said uh, that it was just, like, an innocuous comment, and Jim's like, no, it wasn't. It was very offensive. Very, very offensive. <laughs> Peak offensive. <laughs> so, I, I, did, I mean, I thought some of that stuff was fun. It is, you see two different versions, I think, of Jim, depending on the situation. When Trey's around, I think, is when he's a little more sleazy, annoying, you know what I mean? Like, but... When he's not around and he's just being like dad or like co-parenting, like he's super, like he, it's 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 like kind of a, a Jekyll and Hyde, depending on whether or not Trey's around. We get that flashback where he meets Julia again because she's going to try to get him out of the situation, or at least you know help coach him out of it. And that was the decision of um, the GM of the team is the one who makes that who made that decision, which seems reverse for the GM to make decisions on the owner's behalf. <laughs> but regardless so now you see them like in like the suite or whatever and he's helping coach him with some stuff to say and then i don't know if you noticed but the guy who plays kevin the gm of the celtics that's rick fox who in real life was a member of the boston celtics at one point in time yeah but he's also been acting for a good amount of time as well but we find out when they go back to the confessional again that they fell in love very quickly after that initial meeting how, how do you guys feel about using like the Forget that we're from Boston, but using like the sports team, like that he's an owner. Now I get it. Now that we find out that this is based in some sort of reality, but did I, I almost felt like trade didn't come off like rich enough? Exactly. And maybe because it's just the pilot, but like they should have showed him flashing some cash. That should have been a nicer restaurant that they were at where he found them. Something like that. Like, he doesn't need to be cocky with his money, but like there needs to be something that shows me that he has money. But now that you know that this is based off real and that he had input in this, he probably didn't want that to be a thing. Well, that's a problem, though, too, if he like if, if, if he has any type of like real say in the situation. Yeah, he can't have that much input. Why not? <laughs> Unless he was listed as like an executive producer. But yeah, he's. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I thought when you say, oh, and he's the, the owner of the Celtics and he just seems like. I don't know. There's just nothing that made that seem believable to me. Yeah, they're character. just trying to make him down to earth. You know what I mean? They don't want to put that big. They don't want to put that big gap between them. But there should be a huge gap, which was what would be what threatens him. Yeah, yeah, that would make more sense. And that would be where the hostility comes from. Yeah, I mean, you could also get that hostility from the fact that Donald Faison's a handsome man. True, and he doesn't age. Yes. He looks exactly the same as he did on Clueless and as he did on yep. Scrubs. <laughs> this is one thing I didn't like. I mentioned this earlier. I thought the timeline of the show is kind of weirdly paced because now we cut all the way back to where Jim tracked Julia. So like, I felt like we kind of flowed in a bunch of different directions because we're going in and out of the confessional. We're getting into multiple flashbacks of the incident and then you know him meeting julia and then we cycle all these back and forth back and forth back to you know where we started earlier in the scene and um i thought that was i don't know not paced the best yeah it was weird it was weird it jumped around too much this is also where they talked about um the life expectancy of the fish we also find out that it could be up to 15 years if properly cared for which we find out because um trey went to mit yeah, more Boston stuff. But, you know, this actually, um, again, to highlight a few positives of the show, 
I brought this up when we did two guys, a girl in a pizza place. I other than the fact that he owns the Celtics, which seems a bit extreme. The, the Boston based show isn't too Boston the whole way through, you know, I don't know. They make fluff and and that's apparently only a Boston thing. And they really drive into that fluff and thing. Later. I was going to, I'm going to, I was going to bring that up in a, in a little bit when we see that officially. Yeah. They, do you guys ever? Well, yeah, we'll talk about it when we go there. But I think there's right. a difference between that. Yeah, there's a difference between that, and we, we will talk about that in a minute. And the whole like the the we did when we did um the McCarthy's, and like how overtly Boston they were at all times. And it was like, in case you don't get it, when you're playing a cartoon like a caricature of a, of someone from Boston, other than Lenny Clark, no one even has the accent. Well, yeah, he's probably the yeah. only one from Boston. And you think the others would have faked it? If- but I don't need uh, I don't need that necessarily. That's the thing. Oh no, like, I'm not complaining. I'm just pointing it out. Yeah, and and that's because those other shows go so hard with it that like it, it's nauseating at times, at least to me. So I'm kind of okay with them not doing it. They go hard. Like I've said, I have an accent. I'm sure on the episodes at times it comes out. When I'm cognizant of it, it's less likely to come out. But when when I watch shows like that in it's really forced extreme accents because it's not yes it's a boston accent but like any other accent there's like different dialects you know as small as boston is you know what gets me to the point that i'm insulted is that vista print commercial it makes me so angry oh vista print makes stuff wicked good dude oh they got a good slice Uh, i hate i I get so mad at that and i usually (laughs) i don't usually care when shows and movies do the boston accent that one just gets me. Look it up if you haven't seen it, because it's fucking infuriating. I have seen that, and I agree. So uh, the only other thing of note in this scene that I, I do want to mention before we move on is this is where the plan to buy a replacement fish comes up. And this is, um, you know, m- mutually agreed upon between the, the former couple. Should have flushed the dead one right away. Yeah, why would you keep it? You fucking hide the evidence, you stupid amateur. <laughs> yeah, flush it. We cut back to the house and Jim's dad's there and he's making a sandwich in the kitchen. And that's when the What son, kind of sandwich? Well, it's not quite <laughs> mentioned here, but yes. Um because the son walks in, Jimmy, who's um, you know, the the younger of the two kids that they have, and he's asking if he could have a popsicle. And when his grandfather says sure, he goes into the freezer and that's when he finds the goldfish in his Ziploc bag. He's like, Is this Grace's fish? He's <laughs> like that he is. Like, why <laughs> is he in the he freezer? <laughs> it's like, why is he in the freezer? It's like, I don't know. Your father thought he'd be more dignified than flushing him down the toilet. No. Send him back to the sea. And then, uh, does Grace know he's dead? She does not. And then the, can I make you a fluff and nutter? So I, I do want to, uh, I did want to bring it up. You guys have brought up the sandwiches a million times, but I was trying to wait till it organically came up. I know we've talked about it before on our show while back i yeah. know fluffernut is sold in other areas and we've looked it up and, and kind of gone over some of the stats but i i do wonder how known it is across the country well it's not called fluffernutter right well that's a brand no, there is no fluff that it's exists. The, the sandwich when you mix it with peanut butter is called fluffernutter it's just called marshmallow fluff yep and it originated in somerville and they have a festival every year that celebrates it have you guys ever gone to that no. Yeah, Gordo accidentally went to the Fluffer Festival <laughs> once, <laughs> and things turned out differently. <laughs> no, but Fluff is the is the brand name item. But there's like fakey brands too that are like not the official Fluff. Like marshmallow spread. <laughs> yeah. Also, you, you notice that he doesn't even get a popsicle; he gets a freeze pop. There's a difference. Yes, there is. That's also true. And he gets green. Who picks green when it's super hot out? Freeze pops just hit. It's like as simple as they are, just sugar water that's frozen. But I love them. The frozen do guys, teeny. Do you guys know that you're supposed to snap them in half? If you're if you're a serial killer, you just can. <laughs> but I did see that recently. Yes, yeah, they snap. In I half don't know if it's oven. meant to be that way. I think people but do again, that. You can do it because <laughs> you you know you always got to go get the scissors. I get the scissors. I don't like when people. I would never just bite the top because oh, I don't like who the fuck I, does that. That's what that's, yeah, but breaking it's stupid. Then you have to, ha- you don't have any free hands. You're holding <laughs> two popsicles true, yeah. now. Ice pop. Oh, look at going up. No, that was when he was from, that's the fluffer <laughs> convention right there. <laughs> no, you slice the top off and then you just eat it. I, I, oh, the idea of like 
putting your mouth back on it when it's like ripped up and like, ugh, not like a flat surface. I don't like the idea of that at all. I've cut my mouth on it before after cutting it. I've gotten a paper cut in the side of my mouth. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of them, if I'm being honest. They're, oh, I, like I mean, I'll have one, yeah, but I've never been like, I need a freeze pop right now. Jay's right. They, they're refreshing, but they don't taste good. So on a hot day, they're refreshing, but I don't love the way they taste. Yeah, they're refreshing because anything cold on a hot day is technically they're refreshing. They're like frozen yeah. teeny drinks. That's <laughs> like all yeah. they are. I like them in the summer. I'm also a large kid, so... To go back to the fluffs, did you guys, like, as a kid, I like fluff, but I, not that I dislike it, but the idea of just eating a sandwich of just peanut butter and fluff now. No, it still hits. I, it does hit very nicely, yes. Yeah. I'm going to go and make one after I the show. Might, I might have some fluff kicking around. I think the jelly needs to be present in a sandwich now because it needs something to lighten it up. Like, it's that's too dense. That's what the flush is for. The fluff is for. The flush or nutter. <laughs> That's what I did earlier. Um, no, but the peanut butter and fluff together is too heavy. No, oh, fluff is rarely fluff light. Fluff is very light, yeah. It's marshmallow. The peanut butter is probably, I'm sorry, not the peanut butter. The jelly is probably heavier than the And the jelly is probably fluff. sweeter. Or, no, I don't know, actually. Than sugar? <laughs> than <laughs> pure sugar? Yeah. Uh, what is marshmallow, actually? What Like, how do you make marshmallow? It's like sugar. Sugar and gelatin? Water. And gelatin. And magic. Yeah. I think it's sugar and gelatin. Yeah, I is. used to drop that in my hot chocolates instead of um instead of actual marshmallows. You just put a big lump of fluff in there. Yep, my my grandmother used to do that too. When I was That's a kid, I put it. fluff in my coffee, like in my iced coffee. There you go. That sounds good. If I liked coffee, which I don't. According to <laughs> Google, the typical marshmallow contains sugar, corn syrup, gelatin, plus some air. <laughs> <laughs> So you can't do it in space. You can't make marshmallow substances in space. I only have the one ingredient. It's air. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't I don't dislike fluff. I mean, I haven't had it in forever, but I feel like you need something not that like jelly's light, but I don't know. You need I don't know. It, you got to do it right like right. you got to do it old school style though. You need to get like Wonder Bread. You yes. need the right yes. kind of peanut butter, which in my opinion is Jif, and then you need the right amount of fluff. And you need a big glass of milk. I know you guys don't drink milk, but they just go together. I don't dislike milk. I just don't drink it religiously like you do. Well, that's why I brought up earlier that, like, I only have sourdough bread. I'm also yeah. a Skippy peanut butter guy. I grew up in a Skippy house. Of fucking course you are. What's wrong with Skippy? It's like There's a normal bread. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's nobody's preferred peanut butter. There's no chance. Ask a hundred people. Nobody's picking Skippy peanut butter. It's a very popular brand. I'm I, sure I a I feel lot like, of people have it. I feel like Jif is the hundred percent. I'm sorry. My mom wasn't choosy. <laughs> How do you guys feel about the chunky versus non-chunky versus extra oh, chunky? Like, you have to get chunky. Yeah, I love chunky. So I wouldn't touch chunky as a kid, and as an adult, it's my favorite. Yeah. I never bought it as a kid. It was never in my house. And then as an adult, I never bought it other than if I buy like a natural one that has chunks in it by default. You know what's gross? Organic peanut butter when it's just got that mound of oil on top. G g give me that process. Give me that shitty process stuff like Jeff any day. That's the same like when you buy like almond <laughs> butter. Like <laughs> yep. good luck. Like your, your forearms are tight by the time you're done making a sandwich. I don't think I've ever had almond butter. Is it good? It's good. Yeah. yeah. Flavor wise. Yeah. 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 What does it taste but like? Don't say almonds. almonds. It's a little different than peanut butter. That's all. It's, but yeah. yeah, they're not super different. But the problem is too, like, uh, typically like an almond butter is going to come off more like a natural peanut butter. So it's going to have that the oil. It's going to be grainy. Like, you know, you're not going to find like that nice, super processed, smooth almond butter, which I'm sure that would be delicious. When I was um, working at one of my last jobs for a tech company and I was in charge of their snacks, they would put out little things of almond butter, like they, little like three-ounce packages, but the name of it was called Justin's Nut Butter. Yo, that's, that's <laughs> wicked popular. That's everywhere now. If you it, go to yeah. Target, there's a whole aisle of it. It's like the healthiest peanut butter there is, or nut butter there is. But every time I put it out, I would be like, oh, it's Justin's Nut Butter, and it would make me giggle. I still giggle when I hear the word titmos. <laughs> I mean, props to him for, you know, making a good product with a funny name. Yeah, no, no one's hating on Justin. Way stuff, to go, right? Justin. Yeah. Sorry, Gordo hates you. I don't hate him. 
<laughs> I just said it made me laugh. <laughs> Sponsored by Nut Butter. Oh, yeah, we are talking about a TV show, We're talking about we? a TV show, yeah. <laughs> uh, so to get back into that, we get back into that, to uh, another one of those, like, confessionals on the couch, and, you know, you see the ex-couple sitting there, and as they're talking, you get that kind of pan out a little bit, and you see that, you know, uh, Trey's there with them, and you can see he's not, like, cool with the plan to get the lookalike fish. <laughs> he says flat out, I did not share Jim and Julia's bulletproof confidence in a lookalike fish strategy. I like that when they say it, though. He just makes a noise. He goes, what? <laughs> like, yeah. She, like, she just knows he's not on board. So we cut to, like, back, I guess. I think we go back a little bit because the, the, the timeline's a little weird. And you see Jim and Julia in the kitchen, like, comparing the new fish that's in the bowl to the dead one in the bag. And while they're looking at the, the fish, we see that Trey's also there. And he's making it known that he wants Julia to tell Jim something. And then we find out that she was at that hotel uh, to meet with a wedding planner, which, um, oh, to go back, that's where well. he tracked her at a hotel. <laughs> <laughs> now we know what was going on. Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't put that uh, two and two together until just now. But yeah, so they were, she was there to meet a wedding planner. And he's like, oh, who's getting married? Like, oh, we are. He's like, oh, um, fantastic. And he like congratulates them. And the, you're happy for me? I'm happy for me. Finally, some schmuck is going to know what it's like to be married to you. And then there's a, are you just, are you call me a schmuck? And, and you see like almost like it was going to, there was going to be some tension there, but it gets mellowed out. I thought it was weird that um he's finding out that they're engaged this way. Cause you would think that it would have come out like maybe the day it happened. Cause that means the kids don't know that, yeah. you know, like they're engaged, like they secretly got engaged and didn't tell anybody. Like paparazzi would have blown that if he's the owner of the Celtics. That too, but just the idea that they got like engaged. Yeah, they they got engaged silently and didn't tell a single person that they're related to seems a little because they're like three months into this relationship. It's weird. It doesn't matter with celebrities. I mean, true, true. Okay, I retract that. See, what I would have done is I would have had him be excited. It's like, oh, you're happy for us. I'm happy for me. I don't have to pay alimony anymore. Alimony anymore, or something like that. Not, no, it's some, no, some other schmuck's gonna know what it's like to marry her. It's like you guys were really close. So what are you talking about? It doesn't, yeah. Or just he does express interest in getting um Celtics tickets. So maybe he could have just weaved that in, like, oh, now I get tickets for life. You know, something. You imagine meeting a girl falling in love, Marin, and you inherit her ex husband. <laughs> like one thing you're getting like you're getting like the kids who you're gonna be the stepdad but you're also you get this like dad who's the ex-lover who's just very much in her life yeah like i'm not like yeah not only are we like she has an ex-husband but he's going to be there at all times (laughs) um this is also where trey like really expresses that he's not okay with this plan and he just it's the lying in general that he's not in favor of and, you know, thinks that they need to, like, build trust. And that he thinks that, like, you know, Grace, that is, like, their daughter can handle it. And that's the, you know, Jim's like, she's not your kid. And he's like, well, I'm about to be your stepfather. <laughs> and then there's the good thing she's not a redhead. <laughs> I thought that was, like, that was a, I thought that was a really clever callback. That was. I like that. And that's what I mean when I said earlier. I like their back and forth, their relationship. Like, they have good yep. It's very tolerable. Yeah. Not over the top. They hate each other, but it's not like, hey, we're best buddies and we shouldn't be. So now, like, the whole debate here is basically the, you know, Trey's like, you know, she's she's 13. She's old enough. You can be honest with her. You want to establish trust. Jim and Julia, for that matter, are coming from the angle of sometimes you have to lie to your kids for the greater good. You know, there's certain things like it's just better off to not be completely forthcoming about a fundamental part of parenting all right you don't tell them right away that santa's not real you don't say there's no tooth fairy you don't say the easter bunny don't exist now something like this where where would you sit on the dead goldfish though the dead goldfish i think 13 i actually agree with him 13's old enough that she can deal with it's a fucking fish that died yeah but it's what that fish represents it was given to them because of the divorce yes so it's a little bit of a different situation and i I don't it know. It has a connection, yeah. Yes. I mean, I could... I understand that train of thought. I was going to ask you, like, where you stood, like, being the the parent of the group that's in here right now. 
And yeah, I feel like 13, I mean, I know kids are different now, but I look at us when we were 13 and I don't know, maybe we grew up too fast, but <laughs> you know, um, I just feel like we were above that at that point in time. Yeah. Agreed. I told you, well, I actively wanted my fish to die. I wasn't going to kill it or anything, but I wanted it gone so I didn't have to take care of it. So then as all this debating is going on, we find out that Grace is like on our way in. And when Jim's like, how do you know that? <laughs> and Julie's like, duh, I'm tracking her. So that whole tracking thing comes back full circle. Also, who picked her up? This girl just came from the airport and she's on the elevator. It's like- yeah, she comes back from camp. She shows up. She walks right in the house. Yeah, there was like, yeah, this, this flaws. Maybe Grossbeck sent a limo. Well, he's not a character on this show. Trey is. Well, maybe Trey, Trey Grossbeck. As soon as she shows up, she was like, oh, you know, like they're asking her, how was the trip? And she's like, it was fine, but I miss my family and my favorite fish Googles. <laughs> and then she goes right to the fish. I thought I thought she was going to look at the fish and instantly realize that it was a different fish. I actually liked the approach they took instead because this is when her little brother walks in. He's like, oh, hey, Grace, like, welcome home. And when she's like, hey, Jimmy, he goes, oh, I see you got a new goldfish. Like, what do you mean? Like, <laughs> and he's like, oh, uh, the other one died. So you got a new one? <laughs> and that's when she realizes. And you know what, too? What we left out that when they find out she's on the elevator, he stashes the fish in the freezer again. Like, stop that. Put it in your pocket or put it somewhere else. <laughs> you have plausible deniability. No, he's an idiot. He's like, you know, your brother. Like, yep. But at that point, the cat was out of the bag or the fish was out of the tank. In the bag. Into the bag. That's right. Jim just instantly blames Trey and says that he did it. And then I did like. Yeah, Trey takes it and he's like, Trey, okay, yeah. Even though Trey is the most adamant against lying, he doesn't want to. Kind of, feelings, yeah. yeah, especially when it comes down to, like, the father-daughter dynamic. He doesn't want to get in the way of, like, that, so he just eats it. It it's makes his... more sense for him to have killed it. It's less impactful. Um, he hasn't been around as long, et cetera. Um, so, it, yeah, I mean, it was it was a uh, a noble move. I did like yeah. that. I didn't take it as that. I took it as he's the one who knows she sees through lies, and she's smart. He says it. I think he says that knowing she'll know that he's not telling the truth. I think you're giving it too much credit. I I like that, but I think that's too deep for this show. Yeah, I don't think they're thinking that way. I think he's just trying to be a good guy. So that's when he's telling her, like, oh, I'm sorry. You know, your your mom was stuck in a meeting, and your dad and brother weren't here. So they asked me if I'd watch the goldfish, and I failed. I'm so sorry. And he's, he's, he's telling her in a very sincere way. But um, it doesn't take her a second to, you know, before she realizes that, it wasn't Trey. And it's like, who killed Googles? Was it mom or dad? And you just see him like mouthing really loud, like, it was dad. <laughs> like, <laughs> now, the dad did kill it. Like, for most of the episode, I was like, I mean, fish just died. It couldn't, it's not his fault. And then he says, I don't know if it comes up later or if we, we uh, went past it. I forget. But he, over, he overfed it. He fed it a bunch of times a day. And then the last day, he fed it 10 times. Yeah, you can't do that. Fish is stupid. This was um, something I, I didn't like, and I think you guys alluded to it earlier. He's apologizing to his daughter, saying, you know, I, I was supposed to take care of the fish, and I blew it. And she's like, you blew up our family. And he's like, what? And then she's like, I don't care about the fish. Like, yeah, like, I love the fish, but it was a fish. You thought I couldn't even handle the death of a little fish when I've handled the death of our family? Like, the only family I've known? Don't you realize I'm 13? And as she's going on, like on and on about the situation, she's talking about like, you know, we were a family and you guys blew that up and I'm, you know, this is going to damage me and I'm going to get a tongue ring and start vaping and I'm going to need to talk to a counselor and unlock the liquor cabinet and cut up the cocaine. This is a middle, this is a middle-aged white writer <laughs> who doesn't have any kids this, writing These are for writers kids. with no kids who wrote that because they have no idea how a kid that age talks. I'll tell you all. what, though. I did, I did like the one thing that she said that I did like is that she mentioned basically how annoying it was that they were so happy-go-lucky about their divorce. And I was glad that yeah. that wasn't overlooked because it is, it's incredibly annoying how into the divorce they are. I fucking hate that about the dynamic between them. And the fact that it bugged her on the show, like, I, I did like that they brought that up, and I wonder if maybe that was built in 
So I think that's, yeah, that was, I think, one of those. I, I do believe that in writing, Jim and Julia are genuinely good with their divorce and good with one another and do want to have a positive approach towards it and kind of cut that stigma that goes with divorce. I believe them when they said all that stuff. But I think what they neglected to think of is, regardless of it, your 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 kids are still going to be upset. You know what I mean? That's still hard for kids to deal with, regardless of whether or not you two are happy, because you just took away the like the established family life that they wanted to have and hold on to. The main problem with the way they executed this is was the main part of the story is she's away at camp. So she's not there the entire episode to kind of like plant these seeds that she's unhappy. She just shows up at this part and then goes in the full story mode. You blew up the family and it's out of the blue because she hasn't been there. Even the son who's been home, you saw him once come out of the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, listen, I agree. I think, you know, to, to go back earlier when we we're saying, you know, I mentioned maybe we could have started with the reverse wedding as an intro scene and kind of built from there. Maybe cut the goldfish storyline out. Have it just be built on this idea of we're just learning about this new situation that they're in and their willingness to divorce and stay happy with one another and then eventually realize that it's still taking a toll on the daughter. I think you could tell that story in a way that made a lot more sense. So, yes, and I I do agree that just her character is not, the verbiage does not sync up with a 13-year-old girl. No. The mom's like, Grace, I can see you're upset. And she goes, Mom, you're using mirroring language. I can see that you're not upset. And it's like, again, I was like, this is, this is someone I hate who's this like, so much. This yeah. is a, like, Me yeah, too. someone who's like late 20s, early 30s who wrote this. Yeah, I hate this so much. This whole scene, blow it up. And I'm trying to figure out how you remedy it. And you either you make the daughter older, which you can't do because then it removes the need to do some of this stuff, or you dumb her down. And I think, I mean, you could dumb her down, I guess. Like, you can you can have all these emotions without, like, you know, having all this insanely advanced insight into, like, divorce and your own feelings as a 13-year-old. Like, it's just silly. I don't know. I just think that the goldfish story wasn't the way to deliver no, it wasn't this situation to at us. All. You know what I mean? You can't put that much emotion into a goldfish and I'm not saying that they should have used a different animal. I'm saying they should have used a different plot device entirely because, again, this was a cheap, boring, and, you know, unoriginal route to get to their point. And I, I think they should have. This was a show we, we always talk about back and forth. And, I, and I'm the first to always say you don't even, you don't always need the origin story. But I think here where we were, they were like one foot in, one foot out of explaining it at all times. I think, again, we start, we establish what's going on in their lives, and we kind of tell the story from there because it just didn't, it, learning where everyone stood on situations seemed very difficult to track at times. Instead of doing the whole fish subplot, have her be upset that the mother's remarried. That would have been yeah. how I went yeah. about it. And then you can, you can have her, don't use the dialogue she just used because it's stupid. But I would be upset about that, and then she can vent that, you blew up the family. Now you're moving on. Do you even care about us? Blah, blah, blah. Like, I'll say this. The next thing she says, I think, was the closest to something that I think someone her age could have said, but was still smart. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go play Fortnite. Eh. <laughs> Not that. No. Um, when she's talking about how, you know, the parents kept preaching that family was the most important thing. And they became a family because the two of them decided to make a family. And then they unmade it and they never consulted that with the children. And that's not fair to them. And I thought that was actually, that was pretty smart. That was. Um, but also, I, I didn't like this because this is heavy, right? It's not portrayed heavy because of the plot device and like the, the events leading up to this scene. But it's just needlessly heavy. Like it's not as heavy as, uh, what was it, Blossom? To add like the alcoholic drug yeah, addict the brother. Yeah, threw a lot on you. <laughs> yeah. But like this is like in that vein though. Like, as far as, like, what they were trying to aim for. And, I mean, it failed miserably, but, like, what the fuck, man? Too much too soon. Uh, they cut to the brother to see how he's doing, and he could give a fuck. He's just playing video games. Man, boys are easy. <laughs> and <laughs> you start with Trey with, 
sorry, Grace, I shouldn't have lied about Googles. And then Julie's like, I'm sorry, Grace, I shouldn't have let Trey lie. <laughs> and then <laughs> Jim's just like, I'm sorry, Trey lied to you. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it coming, but it was still kind of funny. He's a stand-up guy. So now they're talking, and they're understanding like the situation. They're like, hey, you know, we shouldn't have did this, and, and you're right with a lot of things, and we, we should have been better about communicating. The news somehow gets dropped on her that the mom and Trey are engaged now, and she's just like, what? And drops the fishbowl, and we cut back to the couch again, and now she's part of the confessional also, holding the fi- a, the, a new fishbowl. Google's three. Yeah. This is how we got Google's three. Yeah. 3.0. Now, did you notice, was there a message at the end, no animals were hurt in the making of this movie, that uh, show? Uh, I didn't notice if they put one up. I like just thought of it now, I would have checked, but I assume so? <laughs> I mean, it's pretty easy, pretty easy to not put a live fish in No, the I know it's bowl. not. I'm just saying, usually you have to put a message like that, because people do freak out. What I thought was interesting in this scene, too, is while they're doing this confessional, because now it's... Her with her parents and Trey, the four of them all on the couch together, they go from it being a confessional scene to a regular scene by panning out and having the grandfather and brother both walk into the room like while they're having the confessional, which I thought was kind of weird. Well, that's what I didn't understand what this show was, because like, okay, they're talking heads, but who who are they talking to? Yeah, this is going to be one of those shows where they're never going to establish that. And I feel like it should have been a step and there's a their easy in is that he's the owner of the fucking Celtics, so they would be documenting something crazy like that. They could say that there was something for a documentary. Did they ever... Um, we covered Modern Family a long time ago. Did they ever establish them? Only in the first episode. It's like one of the first couple lines, and then it's never talked about Then again. they just talk. Yeah, they just talk to the cameras forever after that, and it's just a thing. Grandfather walks in. Another fluff and a reference. <laughs> and then you get that whole... Um, Julia looks over at him and goes... Good to see you, Bobby. Something that he mentioned earlier. <laughs> kind of one of those things that he knew was like the tell sign that she doesn't actually like him. Yeah, I like that it ended up. There. I'll say the show has a lot of callbacks. <laughs> they do like um they they do tie in a lot of the things that they say early on, but uh yeah, I think it's um uh yeah, I, I we're almost done, but as we talk about it, it's over and over again. I think it just there's so many writing issues and then I don't know, the story itself, it, it was it was tough. To, to soldier through and, and, and you get towards uh, the last scene here. We then cut to Jimmy and Julia and they're in the owner suite of a Celtics game. And you see Jimmy all excited as he's grabbing all the swag that's in the, in the suite. I didn't know if you guys noticed this would be a real nitpicky thing. So it's not actually important, but if you guys look in the background, you can see like the court and stuff through the window, like, you know, cause they're supposed to be in a luxury box, all the seats and stuff in the arena are green because it's the celtics but in the garden there are no green seats all the yeah. seats are black that they were yellow they they were yellow they changed them all to black so for the for a while watching the episode that part i thought it was a mural and then i see the people walking and i was like what the hell yeah so they created the garden like a fake version in the background but not accurate because it would be um all black seats now why don't they just film in the garden well that costs money <laughs> Yeah, but the the show is like based on the owner and it's Boston team. They have the money. You can well, film. don't forget though too. The Celtics just rent, so the the Boston Garden is owned by the owners of the Bruins. That's why the the seats were all yellow and black before. So they own the building, and the Celtics just pay rent there. PD Bank owns it, right? They're the namesake. They like they pay to have their name on it, pretty much. Yeah, they pay the Bruins. They paid the Bruins to have their name on it. Yeah. Because there was a time where, uh, I want to say 15 plus years ago, where the Celtics were in talks to open their own arena. They were going to open up an arena in like Southie because basically most times when you go to a Celtics game, you buy chicken fingers and a drink. That $400 is going towards the Bruins, not the Celtics. So they almost opened up their own spot. This way they'd be able to get all that revenue. Now, I thought that. The I thought that the Celtics owners own the concession, like the company that does it. I don't know. I don't think so, because I know that the Jacobs family, who owns the Bruins, own a ton of that stuff. I'll have to look into it, but I could have sworn that they own Delaware North, and that's how they split it. Yeah, because that's what I just saw. Delaware North is the owner of the garden. 
okay, maybe I'm mixing that up. But I don't want to get too inside baseball either because... <laughs> no, this is basketball and hockey. Yeah, correct. Uh, waka waka. But yeah, to those that listen and want to hear about TV and less about Boston sports ownership, we see Jim in there and he's, again, he's grabbing all the stuff. He, he grabs a lamp and she's like, what are you doing with that lamp? He's like, I need a lamp. Like, did you ask Trey if you could take that? He said I could take anything I wanted and I'm helping myself to something that I want. I saw him with the lamp, but was it a Celtics lamp? or was he just Yeah, it was a, a Celtics lamp. lamp. Yeah. Uh. I would think I could take that, too. Yeah, me, too. I think this is swag. Yeah, you don't put out the swag table and then say, oh, take whatever you want, and then don't take swag. Uh, <laughs> Trey does walk in, and he's pretty excited because apparently Celtics had a good game. He says that they're good luck and that they're playing well. They cut over to Jimmy, the son, who's in the seat, and he's chomping on some cotton candy. And the mom says, hey, Jimmy, you got to quit that. And Grace walks up and goes, yeah, Jimmy, quit. Like, our parents quit their marriage. Like, shut up. Yeah, shut up. For real. Shut up. <laughs> this is the time. When they kill your fish, you can be upset. Not when they take you out on a nice day to go to the basketball game. Didn't the kid have like eight cotton candies? <laughs> yeah. That, that would fucking kill someone. I don't know how anyone that would want that much cotton candy. I don't know if even want a full one. I know. Uh the second the second your fingers get wet because you like licked your finger and then you yeah. touch it again, it's like game over. Like give me, give me some, give me some nachos, or give me some of those thirty dollar chicken fingers. Like <laughs> they're really dropping the ball. I was at the garden last week, and I think I got like a, a a drink and chicken fingers and fries. The three piece chicken finger and fry, and it was like over thirty dollars. It was an alcoholic drink, granted, but that was probably the bulk of your price there. But I was actually just talking about this recently. My favorite nachos are like shitty nachos that you get at stadiums like that like movie theaters and too. just with the hot hot yeah like the cheese the hot cheese that you dip the nachos into instead of them being like all i don't know why but just i go to 7-eleven you can chomp on those you could walk a <laughs> quick walk from your house you can have listen i know they're there but i can't in good i live 150 feet from a 7-eleven <laughs> i can't uh allow that to be a thing that i do you know what'll happen you'll do it once and you'll realize how much you like it or i'll overdo it and realize i don't like them Basically, after that, you just you get back to the whole gym with the lamp and him asking Trey if he can keep it. And he tells him that, you know, enjoy the lamp, Jim. He says, thanks. I'm going to go put this in my car. And he walks off. And that's like how the that's episode easy ends. To, like, that's easy to do. Walk to your car and get back in. That's yeah. a task. You, you, I would wait. Yeah. I mean, it, it's in a suite. It's not like you're sitting in a chair and he has to put it under the chair. Like, just leave it. Leave it right there until you leave. I'm just going to assume he's doing that so he can come back and steal more. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. He needs his hands freed up. But, yeah, it's kind of a weird way to end it. Like, I don't mind them ending it at the game, but it was like it was like they decided they wanted to end in the suite because they want to show that part of their situation now, but they didn't have anything written for it. <laughs> so they were like, all right. So if you were the wife's family and you got an invitation to this new wedding, would you even go? Because you went to her first wedding. And then you went to her reverse wedding. And now this fucking girl's getting married again. <laughs> yeah, all this girl's friends just be like, oh, my God. Yeah. Well, this time she's marrying pretty rich. So That's true. It's going to be a nice wedding. Yeah. It's going to be a nice wedding that they're not going to have to pay for this time. Also, you think at the reverse wedding, they gave all the gifts back to the people? You know what? They should have. They should have given a monetary value back to these people. That's a good, I, that's a good point. You insufferable fucks made us come and sit through this <laughs> this stupid ceremony that's a reversal of this wedding that we also had to sit through. We should get something in return for this. I agree. They got a party. Better have been an open bar. <laughs> yeah, right? How awkward would that party be? Both families just there like, hey. No, man, they're cool with it. Meanwhile, their daughter's just crying in the corner and they don't care. <laughs> <laughs> My family's falling apart. I'm a free woman. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, in any event, the weird, weird way to end a weird episode. <laughs> um, I don't really have much else to talk about in regards to this episode other than not to beat a dead horse because we've said it over and over and over again. But I just look at it and I think all the frameworks there. It's like, it's there. They have the pieces. Maybe this episode just got off on the wrong foot. I don't know. It's weird. Like, th there's this curiosity to, like, now know that, like, we don't know if there's going to be a season two or not, but I would be very curious to see how season two starts, if the tones change, if the characters are more fleshed out, if the writing's better. I feel like you have to watch the rest of this season 
I don't know. I don't know if they'll get it this quick. Like, I don't, I don't know if they're, within the next few episodes they'll even have it, but it, I don't know. It seemed a, it's very all over the place. But um, I, I, I think at this point, unless you guys have anything else you want to say beforehand, we might as well get into the Green Ladder cancels. So just a quick reminder, um, again, Joe's not here. So there's always an opportunity for a tie. I don't think that's going to happen today. But just in the event of that, or just if you want to know how he voted in general, we put a graphic up every week on our social medias. S1E1Pod.com is where you can find the links to all those. S1E1Pod on Twitter, now X and Instagram. Um, so those graphics go up and you can see how we voted. But yeah, so to start off, I'll go in the order. I see you in Gordo starting with you. <clears throat> I composed something. Hold on. In a world full of sitcoms, this is definitely one of them. I am canceling extended family. But that 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 cancel. I like how you had to write that. It was mainly the in a world full of sitcoms <laughs> that came to me. That was hard to remember. <laughs> I'm a simple man, Ferg. Simple man with a simple cancel. How I remember in a world full of sitcoms. <laughs> <laughs> uh ferg yeah i haven't disliked the show we've covered this much in a while so you know it's nice to get back to my hateful roots but yeah this show bothers me a lot because of the potential that's a great cast and it's just such poor writing they do a lot of the wall and usually it's like one or two things stick nothing stuck other than a fish it was just it was bad and I knew pretty early I was going to cancel this, and yeah, I, I, I hated it. Cancel. I'm looking forward to find out what Joe says, because we know how he is, <laughs> but yeah, cancel from me. Nick? I very much agree with Ferg. It's, it's the lost potential with this cast is very frustrating. I, I'm not going to put it there with it, because it's not as bad, but I got very similar. I got... Like, country comfort vibes from this. Like, that bad Netflix-produced sitcom. It's It reeked. Because Mama's Divorce. <laughs> That's Mama's Dead Fish. But, like, but yeah, I mean, they're so, so much wrong with this show. It's sad because, um, I, like, like, we've gone on ad nauseum about the cast is great. The acting is perfectly fine, and... It's just it all is hinged on the the writing and, you know, just like the source material is just fucking dumb. It's uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't have a lot to say. It's definitely not a green light. Pretty easy cancel. Um, I will say I am just very, very ever so curious to see where this goes, just because, like we said, I do like the like the overall concept is interesting. And um, and we like the actors. There's no chance I would ever greenlight this, but I, I might hate watch a few more episodes. I think I've been the biggest defender of a lot of the things that have happened in this show. And I, I, I do think that it's not as bad as we may have made it seem, but there's just a lot of things that need improving nonetheless. I do think, again, I keep saying, I think the framework's there. The cast is there. You get the some better writers involved and some more creative storylines. And if things made a little bit more sense, the show could be really good. So there, there's definitely like a little bit of an interest with like where they go from here. And if they flesh that out, but I mean, to watch this episode and I, I can't in good conscience, give it a green light. Uh, there is some curiosity to continue watching. And I told you, I did watch a couple episodes um, before ever um, doing this, this one today, but um, yeah, it has to be a cancel for me. It's just it's just too riddled with bad writing and bad storyline choices for the first episode. So with that being said, um, that's zero out of four. Uh, so regardless of Joe's vote, uh, one way or another, it's still going to be a cancel. So sorry to extended family. You do not continue on to see another episode with us. Again, reminder, S1 Ewan Pod. Please go there. Do all your liking, rating, subscribing, all that stuff. We like interacting with all you guys, so please hit us up. Let us know how you found us, shows you want us to cover. That's a, a great indicator for us to know what we should be doing, what shows to cover, uh, what you guys like to hear. <laughs> Until then, we hope we may have saved you if you haven't watched this show yet, or check it out on your own. If you if you want to give it a shot, it's, it's easily findable. Sometimes we do shows that are a little tough, tougher to track down. So this is an easy one if you want to watch along and, and develop your own opinion. And hit us up again. Let us know how you feel. Did, did we... Um, 
did we go the direction you would have went? Would you have done something different? How do you feel about it? Let us know. But uh, to not ramble on too much longer, we'll see you again next week with another new episode. Thank you. Goodbye. I think we got the best fish mouth to mouth. (laughs) I was going to say, I think we got the best John Cryer choking on a goldfish. (laughs) (laughs) Ba-da-da-da-da-da-da.